This family-owned business with annual sales of over $400 million has been featured in national media, from People Magazine to Fortune to CBS News. Here today to share that philosophy with us as a leading member of the Leonard family, please welcome Tom Leonard. Hi, everybody. Good. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be here with Rita's, and I'm a big fan of yours. And I was telling everybody that I was going to uh, come to your meeting here and uh, at our manager's meeting, and, I, and they said, you're going to Rita's? And we love Rita's. And I said, what do you think we could do to show everybody here just how proud that we are to be part of your meeting? So if you drove by Stu Leonard's, on our 50-foot high electronic billboard road sign, you would have seen this. There you go, okay. Now, <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> now, don't go getting carried away, Mike, because if you drove by five minutes later, that would have been back up there. We, <laughs> we love you, but not more than our milk sales up. <laughs> <laughs> what I was hoping to do was share with you uh, this morning, what we do at Stu Leonard's and uh, why we think it works. And hopefully what I'd be able to do is spark a good idea in you that you could take home to your businesses and use yourself. When I got out of school, I went, we had some extra land up in Danbury, Connecticut. And I, um, I started a tent up there. Uh, we had, you know, we had our store running in Norwalk and I learned a lot, of, a lot of things. That's kind of how I started. I didn't start in a big store. I, well, I started our second store up in Danbury, Connecticut. And there's one of the things that I learned that we're all in the same business, whether you're at Rita's or whether you're at Stu Leonard's, we're all in the same business in the improvement business. But how can we do a better job? And at Stu Leonard's, we believe there's four little simple secrets to success. And you'll see kind of in my talk here this morning, I put together for you, you'll see for us, they're real easy for us to remember. The first is the, the S. It stands for you have to satisfy the customer. And right around um, Christmas, uh, he was, you know, they were bottling eggnog and they were selling it. And a customer came in and they had a half, she had a half gallon of eggnog and she said, I bought this eggnog and it was sour. I want my money back. And he said, sour? He said, we sold over 300 of those last week. We didn't get any returns. That's not sour. You're wrong. And she said, no, it's sour. I'm sure of it. And he said, well, let me, let me try it. And he opened it up and he smelled it. And he poured a little bit in a cup. And he said, oh, it might be a little spicy, but that's not sour. And he, he said that she got so mad there were veins popping out of her neck. She said, I want my money back. And he said, okay. And he reached in his pocket. The eggnog cost 99 cents. He gave her a dollar. She didn't even give him the penny chain. She stormed out of the store, but she got to the front door and she turned around and she said, I'm never coming back in this store again and walked out to her car. And he said, wow, I paid the price for a happy customer by giving her money back. But by arguing with her and telling her she was wrong, I lost a customer. How stupid could you be to argue with a customer? Because even if you win the argument, you're gonna lose the customer. And he believed it so much that he went out and got a 10,000 pound rock of granite and had it put in the front of our store and had two rules chosen in it. And here it is. Rule one, the customer is always right. Rule two, if the customer is ever wrong, reread rule one. <clears throat> now, for you married guys out there, you can easily substitute the word wife. For <laughs> now, how do you listen to the customers? How do you take the pulse of the customer? How do you know what your customers are thinking? So you can do what they want because we're all in the same business as getting and keeping customers. We have suggestion boxes in each, each of our stores and we get over 100 suggestions a day from our customers. But I can tell you a secret. It's the, the secret isn't the fancy suggestion box with the pads on it. The secret is to read the notes and do something right away about it because the very first thing that a customer is going to do if they write a note in your suggestion box is the next time they come into your readers, they're going to look to see if you listened. And if you didn't, if you just look at it and say, ah, we can't do that and throw it in the garbage can, they're not going to write you a note again. But if you do something about it, they're going to write you a second note and a third note. And that's the way you get people to write you more notes and help you improve your sales and your business. That's the way we get more and more and more notes. 
you know, most of the policies at the store, if you think about it, here's, here's another way we, we kind of look at it. Most businesses set up their policies for, well, let's say the 1% of the customers. A customer comes into the courtesy center and they try to beat you. You know, they come up, they, we, here's something, and they try to, try to take advantage of you. So you come up with a policy so you, you don't let that happen again. But 99% of the customers who really have a problem they have to put up with that policy now. So what we try to do is run the business for the 99% of the customers, and we get beat for the 1%. We'll, we'll take that beating. But we want to make it easy for the 99% of the customers. Now, here's a second little simple secret. It's teamwork to get it done. You know, you, uh, it's people. Here's our friend Wally Amos. He said, team stands for together everyone accomplishes more. It takes happy people to create happy customers. Okay, you can have the greatest product in the world and the greatest place. <clears throat> you know, it's not easy working in a supermarket, or it's, I'm sure it's not easy working in Rita's. <clears throat> but there's a story about this part-time kid working in, in a food store after school, and he was working in the produce department, and there was this big guy came up to him, and he, he said, I want to buy half a head of lettuce. And the kid said to him, I'm sorry, sir, but we only sell the whole head of lettuce. And he grabbed him, he picked him off the ground. He said, I said, I only wanted to buy half a head of lettuce. And the kid looked at him, he, he said, well, let me go in the back and ask the manager. I'm sure he'll make an exception. And so the guy said, okay. And the kid walked in the back room and he saw the manager. He said, you won't believe this, but there's some big jerk in the store that wants to buy half a head of lettuce. And just then he saw a shadow and he turned around and he realized this monster followed him in the back was standing right behind him, and he said, and this fine gentleman wants to buy the other half. <laughs> Here's a third little simple secret. Excellence makes it better. We're a big fan of Vince Lombardi. Excellence isn't a sometimes thing. We have one idea trips where we can t take our, one, our vans any place and, and um, uh, you know, go or take our little cruise to go if we can find somebody who's doing a good idea and, and try to copy it and bring it back to our store to use. And, you know, we do a lot of demos. I'm sure you do a lot of demos as well as, as Rita's. We find it triples our sales and, and, and um, a lot of trigger foods. And so we bring our demo crews, we brought them up to, um, to Massachusetts one day because we heard of this store that was doing a lot of demos. And so <clears throat> when on our way back, I sat down and I was talking to Dorothy and I said, what's your good idea? She said, Tom, she said, we use, we use toothpicks in our demos. People throw the toothpicks all over the floors. It makes a mess. She said, she said I got the greatest idea. And I said, well, what's that? She said, we use pretzel sticks now. She said, they eat the demo, they eat the pretzel sticks and our floors are clean. And, you know, it's the little things like that that really help us out. Now, here's a fourth little simple secret. Wow to make it fun. This is my favorite. If you come to the store, you'll see our dairy plant in the store where you can see your milk coming fresh from the farm every day. We have an animal farm out in front of our stores with over 100 barnyard animals. We believe where the kids want to go, the parents will soon follow. We have country western bands in our stores playing during the holidays. We have Clover the Cow and Daisy the Duck running around our store. Our audio animatronics in the store. Here's our Farm Fresh Five that play for the kids. Now, you know, I'd love, uh, you know, everybody has a bag for a reason now, because what I want to do is, if I could, get everybody to, I want to get a Rita's picture, because I want to get you guys up on the wall. If I could get everybody to just stand up with your bag, I brought a camera with me. Okay, come on, guy, get some music there. Come on, There's a come on, lights up there. Which you should know about. There we go, you gotta get them up, it's perfect. Gotta get some lights up real quick. Perfect. Hey man. Thank you. Okay, now I would love to be able to take everybody here from Rita's. I did a little thing here. I'd love to be able to take everybody here from Rita's back to our stores in Connecticut and, and show you around. And hopefully you'll come and visit, but I can't. 
but maybe I could bring the spirit of Stu Leonard's to you. for inviting me. Oh, no, thank you. 